There's a jet. <laughs> Perks of living by military bases. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a breastfeeding tips and essentials video. This video was actually greatly requested over on my Instagram which I will leave my Instagram handle right here for you guys and I'll also leave it down in the description box. I am a lot more active over on my Instagram so if you guys want to stay in touch then you guys can go follow me after watching this video. Now this was greatly requested on my Instagram anytime I've asked what videos you guys want to see so I knew this would be a great video to do right now. I have a lot of mommy followers and subscribers to YouTube and I also have a lot of pregnant followers and subscribers so I know this will be really beneficial to you guys. And if you guys are new or if you guys are regulars you already know that I have a six month little boy rider and he is exclusively breastfed. He does not even use bottles unless me and Connor would go on date nights before he deployed but he hasn't had a bottle since like December. Um, it's only been a month but before that he hadn't had it for like three months. But he rarely ever gets a bottle so we are exclusively breastfeeding. So I'm going to give you guys my tips and essentials. So. Let's get started, everybody. I just want to give you guys a little backstory to our breastfeeding journey. Whenever Ryder was born and they put him on my chest, we did skin on skin, and a lot of the times babies will breastfeed thin. Ryder really wasn't interested in breastfeeding yet, but whenever we went to the postpartum area, he wanted to. And the nurse there was not very helpful. She was telling me to do the football hold, and that was the only way she told me to do because she breastfed her babies like that. And it was not working for us, and I tried to tell her, but she told me just keep trying it that way. She didn't tell me any other way. So I just tried it, and we just got through that night. And then the next day, the lactation consultant came in there, and she told me to try the cross cradle, or the cross cradle, or the cradle. So the cradle's just there right here, and then the cross cradles, basically, you just use the other arm. And that's what worked for us, and that is what always has worked for us. So if your baby is having a problem with a certain position or having a problem breastfeeding, then you could always try going to a different position. And I'll actually leave a link to maybe a website or just a picture of the different positions of breastfeeding. So that can help you guys as well because there are a lot of different positions to breastfeed. But the cradle or cross cradle is what works for us. And I just want to leave a little disclaimer for everybody. I did choose to breastfeed, but I'm not saying anything about those who formula feed. If you formula feed, that is great. If you breastfeed, that is great. I'm a firm believer in fed is best. So there doesn't need to be any argument over formula versus breastfeed on this video. I'm just giving you guys the tips and essentials if you choose to breastfeed your baby. So I'm going to start off with the essentials of breastfeeding, which these are my essentials. They may not be the same for other people. But the first thing is the boppy. Now, some people say that this isn't a big essential. You can just use pillows. You can just hold them. But I find this a lot easier, especially as Ryder's gotten bigger. When he was smaller, I didn't necessarily need it. But as he's gotten bigger, I really do need it. I tried pillows whenever we went home for Christmas because I didn't bring the boppy since we had to fly. And it was so difficult. And I had to prop my leg up. And it was just, it wasn't easy and you want breastfeeding to be as easy as possible I would say so the boppy is the best so literally all you do there's a little groove you put it on your stomach you lay the baby whichever and then you don't even have to hold them they just lay on this so I love the boppy and a lot of people also say don't bring it to the hospital because you won't need it I didn't bring it to the hospital I just used the pillows and he was so little that it, it didn't really make a difference but this may help some people if you're struggling in holding the baby or anything like that but the boppy is a big essential. 
Okay, so next I have the Haka, which it's H-A-K-A-A. -A -A. I'll put that on the screen for you guys. And I will actually, there's a hair. I'll actually leave everything linked down below for you guys as well so you guys can get these if you want to. But basically what you do is you will feed the baby on one side and while the baby is eating, you will put this on the other side and it catches any milk from letdown. So I did not know this. I actually didn't even really know how to use it for the longest time. So I just didn't worry about it. And then one day I was like, I'm just going to try it. And I got like two ounces. So you don't want that milk going into the breast pad. You want it to, you want to catch it because you can save as much milk as possible. So basically what you do is you just fold this down and you put it on, you squeeze, and then you put it on and then you let go and it just pulls it in and then you will do that back so it holds itself it's suctioned on there so you don't have to hold it or anything but you can't really do it like standing up or it'll fall and you do not want to spill milk milk is like golden you don't want to spill it I have cried spilling milk and if you guys breastfeed let me know down in the comments have you ever cried about spilling milk because I have it is so sad when you do but this this thing is so it's amazing and for some reason I've been having problems with it right recently I don't really know Maybe it's because Ryder's not eating as long because as he's gotten older, he is more efficient as, at eating, so he doesn't necessarily eat for 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes he only eats for 10, so I don't think I have enough time for letdown on the other side, so I haven't really been catching anything in it, but it was working great for a long time. So this is definitely an essential, and I'm still trying to figure out if, if it'll work again for me, but... Okay, next, and I don't have this with me right now, but water. Water is a big essential for breastfeeding. You want to double your intake. So they say drink eight cups a day. You want to drink 16 cups a day because you want to be as hydrated as possible because a lot of your milk is water. So that will help you make more and go to the baby. So water is great. And whenever you give birth, they give you a pitcher and it has like it's all the ounces are on there. So you can track how much water you drink. And I think that's so helpful because it's kind of like motivating to know, oh, I drink in so much water. I need to drink more and more and more. And it helps you to make more for your baby. Okay, next, I'd say I have this nursing cover, which some people choose not to cover up, but whenever I am out, I do like to cover up whenever I am feeding Ryder. I sit down and feed him, I walk around and feed him, but I always have the cover on, it literally just goes over, and it's got a little wire right here, so you can stay covered, but you can also look down at him. I love this cover, it's actually called udder covers which I thought was really funny because like the cow udders um but my brother and my mom and dad always make fun of me and call me Betsy old Betsy like a cow I think it's funny I don't really care but yeah this is where I got this from udder covers I know there are a ton they have them at Target I know there's like milk snob they have Disney ones that also will like go over the baby's car seat and I want to get one of those so bad they're so cute but this is the one that I use okay and I will also say nursing bras and nursing tank tops are essential so they literally will just snap and they fold down and so it's really easy access to the baby to get. Now I'll also say easily accessible clothes are always a must. I always have to think when I'm going somewhere, is this going to be easily accessible for me to feed Ryder? Because if not, I don't want to wear it because I'm going to have to feed Ryder if I'm out for a while. Ryder still wants to eat every two hours, which it's typical and especially, he's a little boy, he's growing. So... 
I always have to think about what I'm wearing. And this right here is actually great, a vest and a button up. Just unbutton and feed. But if I wear like a t-shirt or like a long sleeve that I have to lift up, I will always wear a tank top underneath so I'm not showing my back or anything like that. Then we have vitamin D drops and these are the ones I use. I use baby D drops. And I love these. These ones are just, you do one drop on, you can either put it on yourself and have the baby eat from it, or you can put it on their binky or your finger and they just have to suck on it for 30 seconds. But babies that are breastfed need to get vitamin D once a day, which I did not know this. So this is definitely an essential and I think it's a good thing to know since I didn't know this until I went to the pediatrician and the pediatrician well actually I looked it up and then I asked the pediatrician and he said yes and there's another one that we started out with I think it was called Infamil um, that's also a formula brand but it was Infamil vitamin D drops and it was literally you filled up the tube and you gave them the whole tube and that made him super gassy. So then I looked it up and it said in the reviews that that made a lot of babies gassy and made their tummies hurt. So I actually found these and I love them so much. We've used these ever since then. I only used the Infamil Vitamin D drops for a, a week or two. It was not long. But then I found these and it's just one little drop and I love that. It's so easy. And these don't hurt his tummy at all. <clears throat> Another thing is for yourself, you're going to want to take prenatals. I use one a day prenatals. And obviously you need to take these when you're pregnant. But in order to keep all the vitamins and to be healthy, you also want to take these whenever you are breastfeeding. So these are the ones that I take every day. I also took these ones when I was pregnant. And you want to make sure, even when you're pregnant, that there's iron in your prenatals. Because I know some of the gummy ones, because I did start out with those when I was pregnant, they don't have enough iron that you need. So definitely take your prenatals to your doctor if you're pregnant and make sure those are good. And I've also seen and heard that you don't want to change your prenatal while you are breastfeeding. So if you start on one prenatal while you're breastfeeding, you want to stay on that same prenatal until you're done breastfeeding because if you switch it, it could cause your milk supply to drop, which I'm not really sure why, but that's just what I've heard. So I always use these. <clears throat> okay, this <laughs> is Ozzo. A very big essential. I don't know if you can see, but this is just a nipple balm. So, whenever you breastfeed, I only used this in the very beginning. I don't I don't use it now. I haven't had a need to use it, but I used it for the first month or two in the beginning of breastfeeding. And a lot of people use lanolin which I started out with, but I didn't really like it. It was really it's thick. And so lanolin and this are made to put on and then you should be able to feed your baby whenever so that it like moisturizes it so it keeps it from getting dry and cracked or if it is dried or cracked it helps heal it and the baby is able to eat it. But I thought it was so thick I just I didn't like the feeling of it and I just didn't really want Ryder eating that so I got this bamboobies boobies and um it's organic and it's lanolin free i'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside it just looks like this and it does make the nursing pads yellow but i love it and it's so like soft and creamy so it it feels good and it's not like thick and it's also really good for the baby organic so i really really like this over the lanolin but if you want to use the lanolin definitely use that I also have a pump a good pump is always essential so I use the Medela freestyle it's super small and you can like clip it onto you you can walk around and pump so I'll go more into details about why having a good pump is essential because that's more of a tip but a good pump 
thin. I also have nursing pads. Gosh, oh my hair. But that's kind of a given, <laughs> I think. But I use the Lansino ones. They also have Medela ones. They have reusable ones, but I use the Lansino. The Medela ones I thought were a little bit tough, and these ones are soft, so I really like these. And then I have a hands-free pumping bra. And you just put the pump parts, the the shield in here, and then you connect it. And then if you've got a little pump like this, you can just clip it on. You can walk around. If you have a big pump, you can at least hook it up. And then you don't have to hold the shield and the bottles and all those parts. You can just be hands-free. And you can do stuff while you're pumping. So I really, really like that. Then I also have this organic mother's milk tea which I have talked about in my baby morning routine and also my day in the life of a stay-at-home mom, which I'll link those down below for you guys as well. But I love this stuff. I think this stuff really does work. I drink it every day, and it doesn't taste the best, but I have put honey in it. Um, I just now started putting Splenda in it, and it tastes really good after that. But yes, I really, really, really like this tea to help with my milk supply. Then I have these Quick Clean Micro Steam Sanitizer bags from Medela. So you get 20 uses with these, and I think these are so... These are an essential. I just have marks on these to mark every time I've used them because I want to remember. But basically, you just put all your parts in here, and you put two ounces of water, and then just based on your microwave, depends on how long you want to steam them. But usually, you boil your pump parts, and you want to do that once a week, maybe more. But I always use this steamer bag because it does the same thing as boiling, but it is quicker, so I would definitely say these are a big essential. Now I don't have these with me but I will also say them and I will insert a picture but body armors are really good for your milk supply which I don't usually drink them because they're really high in sugar but I know a lot of people do drink them and it just keeps you hydrated because of the coconut milk so that's why they are really good for milk supply. And then also the Milk Makers Lactation Cookies are very good for your milk supply, which if I ever think my milk supply is dropping, if I want it to go up quickly, then I will eat those. You can also make your own lactation cookies or brownies or smoothies. There's so many options, but you can always make those. Um, there's a lot of ideas on Pinterest. And I actually have a breastfeeding Pinterest board, so I'll also link that I'll link my Pinterest and that board down below for you guys so you guys can check that out because I did research a lot which that's a tip I'll get to that in one second because I have one more essential and that is to eat you have to eat food I know after having a baby you want to lose weight so eat healthy food but you don't want to cut out calories. You actually want to eat more calories than you would because the more calories you eat, the more your body will make of milk and then you can give that to the baby. So if you want to make milk, you have to eat your calories. So that's a big essential and I know that's hard for people because you want to lose the baby weight, but if you want to breastfeed, it's definitely essential and important to eat. Okay, now I have my tips, so I'm probably going to have to look at this. So when you are in the hospital, my first tip, talk to the lactation consultant. She helped me so much when it came to figuring out what position I needed, and that was the turning point for me and Ryder, and the breastfeeding was perfect from then on. But also, after you leave, if you have a problem or if you need help, call the lactation consultant, talk to them, or go and see them because that will definitely help. I did go see a lactation consultant after me and Ryder got out of the hospital. It was about two to three weeks afterwards. I thought 
We are, weren't exactly sure what was going on. I was either getting a clogged duct or I was fighting off mastitis because I'd get a temperature, but it wouldn't exactly get to the height of what mastitis is like. So she thought maybe I was fighting it off, but we weren't exactly sure. So I called to make an appointment, but I couldn't get in until a week later. So I basically had to try and figure it out myself. But I still went in there because I did get that to go away. But I still went in there to make sure that everything I was doing was good. And she she confirmed that everything that I did to get rid of that was good. And everything that me and Ryder were doing was successful and working. So to get my milk supply up in the beginning, I would feed Ryder on one side. And then I would power pump on that side after... 30 minutes of him finishing eating. So power pumping changes things. So when I power pump, I will pump for 20, take a 10 minute break, pump for 10, take a 10 minute break, pump for 10. So in all, that is 60 minutes, that's an hour, but you're only really pumping for 30 minutes. But it's basically kind of telling your body that the baby's cluster feeding because obviously your body doesn't know a difference between the baby and pumping. So it's kind of telling it to make more. Also in the beginning, like the first two weeks to a month, I would feed Ryder and then in that 30 minutes waiting to power pump, I would pump on the other side for 20 minutes. So it was kind of teaching my body that I had twins. So it was making even more and I saved all this milk. Um, and... After a while, I stopped doing that because my milk supply got so much. I didn't want to make too much or be engorged too often, but that helped me in the beginning to establish my milk supply. Now, right now, I do have seven big Ziploc bags in my deep freezer, and so you can keep milk in a deep freezer for a year, and you can keep them in a big freezer for, I believe, six months. If that's wrong, I'll put it on the screen, but um, basically what I do is whatever I pump, I will put in a little milk supply bag, and I like the Medela bags, but there's so many options, but I do like the Medela ones, and then I will lay that in my regular freezer so that it's flat, and then I put it in my deep freezer. I have a little bin that I put them all in. And then once I get enough, I put it in a Ziploc bag. But that makes it so much easier to store if you lay it down first to let it freeze in the first place. So that is a big tip for you guys. Lay it down and you'll have so much more room for all your milk. And another big tip, which this is kind of a given, but if you are away from your baby, you need to pump. So basically, if you're going to miss a time when your baby is eating, you want to pump so that your milk supply doesn't drop. I remember there was one time right after Ryder was born, before everyone left, me and Connor went on a date so that it was going to be like our last date until um, the Marine Ball, which I will link that video down below too. But that was our last date, so in July until November. So we went to dinner and we went to a movie and the movie was later. So we were gone for like four or five hours. So I had to pump in the car of the movie theater parking garage after we ate. And then I had to put it in a little container with an ice pack to keep it cold so that my milk supply wouldn't drop since Ryder was just born. So if you're going to be away from your baby, you definitely need to pump so your milk supply does not drop. Also, some people like to feed on one side and then they burp the baby and then they feed them on the other side. I personally just feed on one side and then burp them and then the next feeding I will feed them. I will feed him on the other side. So that's personally what I like to do, but it's your preference. Another tip, and this is something that scares some people, but cluster feeding. This scared me whenever Ryder was first born. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not making enough milk. He wants to eat every 15 minutes. He wants to eat every hour. What am I doing wrong? It's completely normal. It's normal in the beginning for them to cluster feed, which if you don't know what that is, that's just wanting to feed frequently. It doesn't mean like a specific time, but it's just wanting to feed 
very frequently, but it is completely normal, especially in the beginning. And later on, it can be normal as well, because if they're going through a growth spurt, they're going to want to eat more often. But cluster feeding is normal. It's no indication of your milk supply not being good enough. And along with that, the only indication of your milk supply being not good enough is your baby not gaining weight and not enough wet and poopy diapers, which at the hospital, if you choose to breastfeed, they will give you a chart that you can keep track of every wet and poopy diaper and also every time you feed them, how long they fed, all of that. And then every time you go to the doctor, they'll take the baby's weight and they'll let you know if the baby is gaining enough weight and if they are, that means you're doing good and the breastfeeding is working. If not, they'll talk to you about supplementing or switching to formula and that is definitely your choice to do. Now, if you are to get a clogged duct, I have a big tip for this because it hurts. So, if you get a clogged duct, what you want to do is you want to use a warm compress, whether that be a heating pad or you throw a washcloth, like a just a normal washcloth in the dryer, then you can lay it on you, not when feeding the baby. The baby cannot be near you whenever you're doing this. But then after you use the warm compress, take it off and then you can feed the baby or you can pump and massage wherever you feel that clogged duct is and it helps to work it out and also use cabbage leaves. This may be the weirdest thing ever. I thought it was weird too, but when I got a clogged duct, I had Connor go to get cabbage leaves and you just put it in there and for one, it's cold so it feels good on it and two, apparently cabbage leaves helps to pull it out and it helped. It helped me get rid of my clogged duct. So cabbage leaves are definitely a must if you have a clogged duct. Another tip I have is to be cautious of what you eat. Now my lactation consultant said you don't need to avoid any foods, which I know other people say differently. Other people say broccoli makes them gassy or different things like that. But my lactation consultant said you don't have to avoid any foods. They do say only drink one cup of coffee a day so that your baby's not getting a lot of caffeine. I'd say whenever you feed your baby, pay attention to what you're eating and pay attention to how your baby is reacting. So if your baby acts like their stomach hurts or if your baby acts extra gassy or fussy, maybe think, did I eat something different in the last few days or did I eat a lot of something in the last few days that could cause this for my baby? So you really want to be cautious on what you eat and how it's affecting your baby because if something is irritating to your baby, then you do want to avoid that. And I do have a story behind this. So on my birthday, so Ryder was born on July 24th and then Connor's birthday is July 27th and mine's July 29th. So on my birthday, we went to Cheddar's. My family was still here. So my family and then Connor and Ryder, obviously. Connor's family had left the day before because they had to go back for work. But we went to Cheddar's. And we I had salad with ranch and cheese. And I got a baked potato with butter and sour cream. And I had chicken tenders with ranch. And then we ended up having chocolate cake and ice cream. So that is a lot of dairy. And the next day, my poor baby, even that night, he was so gassy. He was so fussy. And his stomach was just rumbling and hurting so bad. I felt so bad for him. There was nothing I could do for him. But that all that dairy not necessarily just drinking a little bit of dairy because having a little bit of dairy doesn't bother him but all that dairy was so bad for his stomach and then I ended up pumping that night and we noticed like three months later that we gave him that milk and he was gassy again so if you're a breastfeeding mom you're gonna cringe I had to throw that milk away <laughs> which it's fine because I don't want to give him milk that affects him. But like I said earlier, milk is golden and you do not want to have to throw it away. 
Okay guys, I think that is all the tips and essentials I have for you guys. If you guys have any questions about breastfeeding, let me know down in the comments and I will definitely answer those for you guys. I could also do another video if you guys are wanting to know more about my breastfeeding journey or if there's a lot of questions that I can answer more of those. And I'll continue to let you guys all know how our breastfeeding journey goes as time goes on. I do plan on weaning Ryder whenever he is a year old so I'll also probably do a video about weaning so that can help those who are going to be doing that also. But if you are breastfeeding or if you're pregnant and you plan on breastfeeding just know do not give up. You got this. I know there are some circumstances where you can't breastfeed and that's perfectly okay. Formula is not bad. And if you just choose to give formula, that is great. Fed is best. But I myself chose to breastfeed and I love it. I love the bond me and Ryder have. And if you choose, you will love the bond that you and your baby have. But just know it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult but you can do it and once you get into the groove of things and you get in your little routine it will be a breeze for you. There are times where you still hit bumps after in the journey like if you think your milk supply is dropping or your baby goes through a growth sprint you don't think you're making enough. You can get through it. You know what you're doing mama. So I hope you guys like this video. If you guys did please give it a thumbs up. Again, let me know down in the comments any more questions that you guys may have about breastfeeding and I will definitely answer those. Also, if you're a breastfeeding mama, like I said earlier, let me know down in the comments if you've ever cried about spilling milk because I know I have. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't yet. Turn on that notification bell to get notified every time I post a video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys! Uh -oh.